Hey, I'm Alana Jones with EXP Realty, and today I just wanted to share with you what to expect after your offer has been accepted, whether you're a seller or a buyer. So let's get started. So you went through all that hard work to get your offer accepted or accept an offer, depending if you're the buyer or the seller. And now the work begins. So what should we expect? Well, let's get started. So step one is the earnest money deposit. Typically the earnest money deposit is due within three days of an accepted offer. The earnest money deposit is typically about 1% of the purchase price. So you made an offer and the offer was accepted at 450,000. So your earnest money deposit is 4,500. Your realtor and title company and escrow company will help you in those next steps on getting that earnest money deposit. There's, There's typically a couple of ways you can get your earnest money deposit in. And that is either you can drop off a check or money order to title and escrow officer. They do provide all that information for you directly. Or what most people do is a wire transfer. Yes, there's been a lot of wire fraud, but I always have my clients call title and escrow, verif verify the uh, account numbers, and then once the numbers are verified, you transfer the wire into the title and escrow account where they hold on to it. And yes, your earnest money deposit goes towards your down payment. Seller disclosures. What are seller disclosures? Basically, it's disclosures that the seller puts in writing everything and anything they know about the property, and then some. A lot of inspections. Okay, so if you're the buyer, this is where you schedule all your inspections. And this is where us realtors come in and help navigate that for you. Now you pick out your inspector, whether it's pest, home, roof, HVAC, electrical, it's really up to you um, how uh, many inspections you wanna do. It, yes, it is easy to schedule them all in one day, so that way, you know, we can get all the reports back together. But, you know, not all companies have the same schedule. And sellers, this is where, they, where the buyer, this is where they get to go in and inspect the entire property. So this and way, the buyer has a really good idea about the ins and outs of the house. Once the inspections are over, Typically, each inspection company, or maybe it's the same inspection company and they do several different types of inspections for you, typically they all send reports. Those reports get sent to the buyer directly because more times than not, the buyer's paying for them. And this is a period where the buyer and the realtor review all the inspection reports. This is the time to say, hey, um, it looks like, you know, the roof might need uh, some tiles replaced on it or, hey, there's some dry rot. And, and then your realtor will put it in writing asking the seller to either do those repairs, give you a credit, or maybe you just are buying it as is and, you know, you don't care. So, um, and this is the time that you ask the seller for either a credit to fix it, or maybe you're not gonna have them do anything at all. Sellers, this is the time where either you too can negotiate with the buyer on the things that you wanna do or don't wanna do. This is a negotiable item. This is a way for the buyer and seller to you know, come to an agreement on, hey, I can live with that, I can't live with that, so on and so forth. But as soon as that's all said and done and you guys come to an agreement, there's an inspection contingency. Usually in a regular contract here in California, the inspection contingency is anywhere from 17 days or less. You get every, get all your inspections in, gets all the reports in and you, you are done, check that off your list. So after that is all said and done, 
that's when you can go and say, all right, we're done negotiating about the inspections and what needs to be fixed or credits. You get to check that off your list and remove that contingency. So appraisal. So pretty much when you get into a contract and the loan officer will order the appraisal for the buyer. The buyer pays for the appraisal. And again, this goes directly to the buyer. And what happens typically is either the listing agent or the buyer's agent is contacted. They make an appointment, the appraiser goes in, assesses the home, and then they do a report and appraise the home. They have the full contract, so they know exactly what the buyer offered the seller or what the seller's in contract with the buyer. So everybody has all that information and appraisers go in, they will compare your home with like-kind properties and they typically will only use closed sales. One of um, the few things that really can hold up a transaction is not getting your documents into your loan officer. Your loan officer has to have all kinds of certain documents and they request them from you at the pre-approval time, then they're going to request more. I mean, it just seems like, oh my gosh, I already gave that to them. But more times than not, it's, it's coming from their underwriter and underwriters really need to have certain documents and your loan officer needs to turn those documents in and you could be in line to get those documents approved and then sometimes they come back and say well we need more information yes it's a an an, overwhelming process sometimes but it's very necessary and being efficient with your paperwork and getting it to your loan officer is so helpful in the process because it helps the transaction go so much more smooth and that way we can hit all of our um, contingency dates. Yes, there's typically a loan contingency that's typically about 21 days in the California contract. Sometimes they shorten it, sometimes they waive it. Of course, if you're buying cash, none of this applies. Okay. So you've done inspections, the appraisal has been done, it's come back, and your loan's been approved 100%. They're not asking you for any more documents. At this time, when those things uh, are finished and you've hit your certain dates, then these are the times where you remove all contingencies. And removing all contingencies means you are ready to go. Your loan's been approved. You're ready to get to that next step. I mean, we're at the very end of the contract and we're getting ready to close. It's a really exciting time. Verification of property. So verification of property is basically a walkthrough of the property. Sellers, this will, you'll allow your buyer to come back in five days before closing. And what they're typically looking for is that the home is in the same condition as it was when they first put an offer in on the house. There's no new holes in the wall or, you know, um, any distraction or new paint. Basically, they're saying, oh, I walked the property and yes, everything looks the same as it did when I was there day one. So the walkthrough is done, contingencies are removed, we're getting really close to closing, but we have a three day cooling off period. During that three day uh, cooling off period, you'll hear from title and escrow where depending on what state you live in, they're going to set you up with a notary and they're gonna set up notary with the sellers to sign documents and they're gonna set up an appointment with the buyers to sign documents. So the buyer cannot sign for three days after they have signed their closing disclosure. The sellers on the other hand can sign. So typically buyer and seller sign, the notary gets all the documents back to title and escrow. After they you sign and they get the documents back to title and escrow, Title and escrow sends your documents back to the loan officer. The loan officer then funds your loan and sends the wire back to title and escrow. Once that is all complete, title and escrow have the funds to record. They have all the signed documents. They can 
take those documents to the county recorder's office and record it from the seller's name and to the new buyer's name. And when that happens, woo, you just got a house. For you buyers and sellers, you just sold your house. So that's when the, tra the transaction is officially done, closing day. And of course, the next steps for the buyer is to get their keys. And then the sellers, yes, your funds will come to you within about 48 to 72 hours. And you typically get your funds, whether that's, you know, wire transfer, a check to pick up a title in escrow, or they mail you a check. Buyers, you can arrange time to go get your new keys and voila, transaction is over. This is such an exciting time for both the buyer and the seller. Yes, it can be tr stressful, but there's so many different moving parts within a transaction and everybody within this transaction wants it to go smooth as possible. So these are just a few steps that I have outlined on what you should expect during your transaction, whether you're a buyer or a seller. If you enjoyed my content, please like and subscribe to my page. I would much appreciate it. My name's Alana Jones with EXP Realty. See you next time.